What's going on? My name is Trevor Spires. I'm a senior solutions architect at a major cloud company. And today I'm going to answer the question, what is a solutions architect? It requires a little bit, bit of explanation. So I'm going to break this video down into chunks. First, I'm going to tell you who can become a solution architect. Then I'm going to cover what a solution architect does and why we need solution architects. Then I'll share an opinion on why you might want to consider becoming a solution architect. And then of course, I'm going to close with a little bit of explanation on how somebody can become a solutions architect in their career. As always, your time is incredibly valuable to me. So I'm going to break this video up into sections so you can navigate to the end if that's what you're looking for, or you can stay and watch the whole thing if you want to hear a more robust answer of the question, what is a solutions architect? Let's get into it. First, who can become a solutions architect? Well, first of all, I work with literally thousands of solutions architects in my current job. And what I can tell you is that they come from a variety of backgrounds, white, black, brown, some in America, some overseas. Some started as software developers. Some started as school teachers. Some started as network engineers like me. Some went to college, some didn't. Some had rich parents, some had poor parents. There's really no common thread when it comes to your personal background in terms of who can become a solution architect. I think anybody from any background can become a solutions architect. There's a huge variety in the types of people that eventually become solutions architects. But one common thread across all of these people that become solutions architects is they tend to have a technical background and a really strong people and business acumen. So that means generally solutions architects are people with deep understanding of a few technology areas or a broad understanding of a lot of different types of technology. They can dive deep into technology, but they can also zoom out and talk to leaders in business about how the technology is going to help them achieve their revenue goals or their business objectives or support the people that work inside of that business to make their jobs and lives easier. There are some programs for people that have no technology experience to become a solution architect right out of college. However, the overwhelming majority of solution architects today are professionals who started as engineers or developers, and then eventually later in their career at a more senior level, they would become a solution architect. Hey, if you like content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're a solution architect, I would love for you to leave a comment with some advice to other people who are aspiring to become solution architects. And if you want to become a solution architect, drop a question down there, I'll answer, and maybe we can get some other solution architects from the community to answer your questions about what it is to be an SA. Now, what does a solution architect do and why are they important? So there's a lot of different types of solution architects out there. There's generalists, there's specialists, some work in a pre-sales capacity before a customer buys a solution. Some implement the solution with the customer after they've purchased it. So there's a wide range of skills and needs that organizations need from their forces of solution architects. I'm actually gonna make another video where I break down the different types of solution architects and what they might do in their day-to-day -day job and how they're different from one another. I'll leave a card up here once that video is complete. Check it out if you're curious of all of the different types of solution architects that there are, and we can dig into the details on the specific day-to-day -day of what those solution architects look like. So the easiest way to explain what a solution architect does is they connect business problems with technical solutions. Oftentimes, large companies and small companies have their in-house expertise that's there to maintain and build upon their current solutions and their current infrastructure. However, the world's always changing. And so businesses are always integrating new technology and new solutions to keep up with competitors or to innovate on behalf of their customers. That is where a solution architect comes in. Before a business hires headcount and invests heavily in a new solution, they borrow expertise from their partners, companies like AWS and the big cloud providers, as well as many other technology vendors, will bring in solution architects to consult with customers and articulate the value the solution may have to their business and also to enable the existing teams on how to build, operate, install, and manage a specific piece of technology that's gonna support the business in the future. And some solution architects stop there and hand it off to a different team once the customer decides on a solution, while others 
will see the solution from beginning to end. They'll educate the customer and then they'll go all the way through to implement that solution hands-on with the customer. This is why I've made a separate video explaining all the different types of solution architects because there really are just so many different types of solution architects out there that can be great fits for different personality types and different interests. Let me give you an example of something a solution architect might do. Let's say that I am a bank and I have a website that my customers are using and I would like to integrate a support chat bot into my website. Problem is, I've never done that before. Nobody that works for my organization has ever implemented a chat bot. Frankly, we know what they look like. We get why we might want a chat bot to help support our customers, but we have no idea how to make it work or how to integrate with our existing website. That is where a solution architect might come in. A solution architect would come in and educate the customer on how the chat bot works, why they would implement it, the value of that. Maybe we'd even tell them how much it would cost to host and manage that chat bot for the next couple of years. So hopefully you can start to understand when a business has a problem or a new thing that they need help doing that they've never done before, a solution architect comes in as a trusted advisor to consult and help the business learn about and implement that solution. So why would you wanna consider becoming a solution architect? In my opinion, a solutions architect is one of the coolest jobs in technology because we sit right on the middle of business and people and technology. To me, that's amazing because while technology is cool, every piece of technology that is implemented and adopted today is deployed based on a human decision. So as important as technology is to this world we live in, one thing is more important. That is the people driving and making the decisions around a technology that a business or an organization decides to adopt. And while engineering and designing complex solutions is very cool, there's just something special about getting to be a part of the human decision-making process around adopting and investing in a new technology. I love it. It gets me excited to go to work every day. And I think a lot of other solution architects that I work with and that I know feel the same. Also, it keeps it pretty darn interesting. Once you master a technology, sometimes it can become kind of rinse and repeat. People, people are impossible to master. There's so many different personality types. There's so many different businesses and organizations and decision-making processes that it's one of those jobs where even if you manage to completely master the technology, you can really never get bored because human beings are so complex and so dynamic. And so there's something cool about that mastery and about that almost limitless skill cap that can be developed in a field like this that's so human-oriented. Another glaring reason people want to become a solution architect is is it's one of the best paying jobs in technology today. Because it requires so much soft skills and so many hard technical skills, it's actually a rare combination right now to have people that are gonna crush it at that type of role. It requires a lot of training, a lot of grit, and a lot of really hard work to get good and to be able to dive deep, but also zoom out and speak at a high level when it comes to technology. Because of that, I've seen solution architect salaries range on the low end from the mid 100,000 range and on the high end upwards of 400, almost half a million dollars a year for people working in the United States as a solution architect. Now, don't get me wrong. You should not expect to make a half a million dollars a year as a solutions architect. However, it is a great field. And I would say it's not that hard once you get into solution architecture to make 200 plus grand a year in this field today. It may take you a while. And frankly, what's harder than making 200 grand as a solution architect is getting that first job as a solution architect. Speaking of that, let me answer my final question. How does somebody that wants to become a solutions architect become one? Well, because solutions architects comes from such a broad background, it's hard to say exactly how you can become a solution architect in simple terms, but I'm gonna give you some advice that I feel is sound for anybody that's an aspiring solution architect and wants to get into this part of the technology field. I think the most important thing for an aspiring solutions architect is to build your technical foundation. Whatever you're doing today or whatever you're interested in today, networking, security, software development, infrastructure, cloud, whatever that is that sparks your interest, I think the first thing you should focus on is getting really, really good at that thing. As a solutions architect, we have to influence people, which means that people need to trust the advice and the guidance that we're giving them. It becomes much easier to gain somebody's trust if you know what you're talking about. Therefore, step one is know what you're talking about. Understand the technology. That's going to be crucial to you gaining credibility in influencing businesses to do things that will help them 
with the technology that you represent as a solutions architect. Technical skills though, are only half the equation. I would focus the rest of your time and energy on just learning about people and about business. You need to understand how businesses buy technology, how people in businesses that buy technology make those buying decisions. And so doing things like reading books on people and psychology and business and just broadening your knowledge on those topics are a crucial skill set for somebody who wants to become an SA. The best thing that you can do here is really just fall in love with business and technology. If you can develop a genuine interest and love for your fellow human being and their complex brains and emotions and a genuine love for commerce and business and how money flows through businesses and value and what a dollar is worth. If you manage to develop a love for those two things and you have some technology savvy, you very well may be a great fit to become a solutions architect one day. So you've learned your technology and you think you've got some good business and people acumen under your belt and you can go in on the front lines and influence customers to adopt technology to help grow their business. Now what do you do? Once you feel like you're ready to take that step and start applying to roles and interview to become a solutions architect, the best thing you can do is network with other solutions architects and people that work at companies that hire solutions architects. So look online, look at the job descriptions, send in some applications, try to get some interviews, but also talk to other solutions architects and get feedback from them on what you can do to develop your resume, your skills, and ultimately land a job. That is absolutely going to be the hardest part of the journey for most people. And the sad truth is just because you want to become a solutions architect does not mean you can or will become a solutions architect. It takes more than one. It takes really going out of your way and developing, I think, a passion for these things is the easiest way to do it. Because when you're passionate about something, it doesn't have to feel like work or a grind. When you develop a genuine passion for something, the journey can be just as interesting as the destination. And so focus on that, focus on falling in love with technology, falling in love with people and falling in love with business. And you're going to do just fine, whether you become a solutions architect or whether you just work in technology at a company internally for a couple decades and build a nice little career for you and your family. Hey, I hope you liked this video. I hope it answered the question that you had when you came in. If you have any other questions, throw them in the comments. Otherwise, I make more stuff like this. Go ahead and subscribe. You can follow me on LinkedIn as well. I'm pretty active there. So keep calm, keep learning, be nice to yourself. And until next time, take it easy. Bye.